on an important subject of gate exam that is electronic devices and circuits edc this circuit uh, this subject carries around uh, 4 to 6 marks in gate exam out of 100 and also this this subject is uh, important as far as analog electronics is concerned because most of the topics in analog electronics uh, are based on the concepts of adc we will start our discussion with energy band diagram an energy band diagram is the representation of energy levels of different type of charge carriers that are present in the material charge carriers are of two different types one is electron and one is mole. electrons in the material are of two types one which can take part in conduction means after applying supply to the material electrons can move that are called free electrons and another type is bonded electron bonded electron means which are in covalent bonds or any other in case of metal in metallic bond uh, bonded electrons which cannot move uh, even if we we are we have applied supply across the material and another type of charge carrier is hole these three charge carriers carry different energy means these are at a different energy levels and representation of energy of these charge carriers is done through energy band diagram an energy band diagram basically consists of three energy band one called conduction band one valence band and an energy band which separates both conduction band and valence band called forbidden band conduction band means higher energy levels valence band matlab <laughs> means lower energy level and forbidden band separates these lower energy levels and higher energy level if an electron is bonded means that cannot move is said to be present in valence band means valence band represents energy of bonded electrons if we may uh, we want to uh, we want this electron to take part in conduction uh, we have to first move this electro electron from valence band to conduction band means we have to break the covalent bond and make this electron as free electron so uh, now i can say that the energy of bonded electron lies in valence band and the energy of free electrons lies in conduction band means conduction band represents energy of free electrons present in the material and valence band represent bonded electron present in the material if this bonded electron is uh, moved from uh, valence band to conduction band there will be a deficiency of electron which is called hole this deficiency will remain in valence band itself so now i can say that the valence band represent energy of holes present in the material so there are three energy bands first conduction band conduction band this conduction band represents represents energy of free electrons free electrons means the type of electrons which can move with when supply is given to the material number two valence band valence band valence band represents 
represents energy of bonded electrons and holes in the material number 3 called forbidden band forbidden band is the separation between conduction band and valence band if suppose any electron is present in valence band valence band means uh, an electron in valence band means uh, it is a type of electron which cannot move even if supply is given if this electron is uh, if we want this electron to take part in conduction we have to first move this electron from valence band to conduction band and for this we have to apply some energy supply some energy to the material energy is supplied energy is supplied in two form number one we can increase temperature of the material means surrounding temperature of the material and number two by making light to incident on the material in these two form we can supply energy to the material if temperature is increased of the material uh, we can say that energy is being supplied to the material and with this energy supplied an electron will gain some energy and if it if it is sufficient to break the bond in the material this electron will break the bond and will move from valence band to conduction band and become free electron and the deficiency of electron in the valence band is called hole to move an electron from valence band to conduction band we have to supply some energy which is approximately this much this energy band which separates valence band and conduction band called forbidden energy band and the width of forbidden energy band eg represents the minimum energy minimum energy required to be supplied required to be supplied in order to move an electron from valence band to conduction band now we will uh, see energy band diagram insulator and uh, semiconductors out of these three materials uh, we will mainly focus on semiconductors because we are going to uh, study the devices which are made up of semiconductor material semiconductors are classified into two types one is intrinsic semiconductor an intrinsic semiconductor is also called pure semiconductor pure semiconductor means in this semiconductor only the semiconductor atoms are present that is there are no other atoms added to this material the other type is called extrinsic semiconductor they are also called impure semiconductor impure semiconductor means we have added some other atoms to the semiconductor and a special case of extrinsic semiconductor called degenerated semiconductor this degenerated word is used for the doped semiconductor extrinsic semiconductor in which doping is very high doped highly doping means doping means addition of other impurities to the material if 
a material is doped it is called extrinsic semiconductor or called impure semiconductor if doping is very high then in that case a semiconductor is called degenerated semiconductor uh, highly doped material is called degenerated semiconductor out of these impurities if these two impurities are available this will be preferred now we will study in detail what is an intrinsic semiconductor intrinsic semiconductor intrinsic semiconductor means pure semiconductor we take an example of silicon for this silicon its atomic number equal to 14 out of these 14 two electron will be in first shell eight electrons will be in second cell and four electrons will be in third shell called valence shell these four electrons are called valency electrons in more detail we can uh, draw atomic structure of silicon in this atomic structure there will be 14 protons and some neutron and around this nucleus there will be electrons orbiting two electrons will be in first shell and eight electrons will be in second shell and remaining four electrons remaining four electrons will be in outermost shell called valence electron out of these 14 electrons the valence electrons are in the outermost shell means the distance between nucleus and these outer, uh, valence electrons is more as compared to other electron and nucleus so the force between force of attraction between negative and positive charge force of attraction is less if this force of attraction is less means these electrons can easily be removed from here and these electrons can be made free electron this is how uh, a, a bond will be broken and uh, uh, an electron will be removed from this uh, outermost shell now we will see bond structure of silicon in silicon every atom possess every atom possess four valency electrons four valency electrons if these silicon atoms are in the in a material the whole in the whole material each silicon will try to become stable and stability will be acquired if valence band is complete sorry valency shell is complete if for any atom it's valency shell is complete we can say that this atom is stable and in the material every silicon atom will try to acquire stability and for this each silicon atom will share its electron four valency electron with other four adjacent silicon atoms and a bond structure will form which will look like this silicon atom it will be surrounded by many silicon atoms
Each silicon atom possesses four valence electrons. I am showing only these electrons because these electrons are easy to be removed because the force of attraction between these electrons and the nucleus is less as compared to other electrons. These silicon atoms are present in the material with all with four valence electron. This silicon atom will acquire stability. This silicon atom will acquire stability when its valence shell will come uh, will be complete. And for this uh, purpose, this silicon atom will share its electron this electron with this silicon atom and a bond will be formed between two those two silicon atom this electron is shared with this this silicon atom and this electron is shared with this silicon atom and through this sharing these two electrons these two electron will belong to both the silicon atoms these two electron will belong to both the silicon atom we can say that this electron belong to this electron belong to this silicon atom or this electron belong to this silicon atom and this silicon atom both in this way all the electrons will be shared with adjacent silicon atoms and for this silicon for this silicon there are one two three four five six seven eight eight valence electrons means its valence shell is complete and its valence shell is complete and in this way all the electrons will try to complete their valence shell and electrons will be shared with the adjacent silicon atoms in this way total uh, complete valence shell complete bond structure will look like this in this bond structure uh, we are saying that there are many electrons but all these electrons are present in covalent bonds are called bonded electrons and the bond formed with the sharing of electron is called co covalent bond